Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing? Doing okay. Um, I started on the wrong screen. There we go. Now I'm on the right screen. Go. Oh, hey. Hello. Hey. You know, I'm tempted to start over again, but you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Give everyone a sneak peek, a sneak peek at what we're talking about today, which is conference realignment. Uh, man, it's the first day of camp. It feels dumb to be not or the first week of camp it feels dumb not to be talking about the first week of camp. But we're having like tidal waves of change in the future of college football, not not just the presence the present of 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 college football, but the the future of college football. Um, yeah. So it's it just, kind of impossible not to talk about it. Yeah, it wasn't just one team or two or three. It, it's what six teams. Well, <laughs> Kyle, we have a hundred year old conference that is dead. Well, down to four right now, yeah. but yeah, essentially yes. Kyle. Uh, all right, honest question. Honest question. Um, your uh, San Diego State, your Boise State. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pac Pac twelve gives you a call and be like, "Hey, you want to leave the Mountain West and come here?" Are you saying yes at this point? Because I don't know. I you, you would start you would start <laughs> asking questions. You you would start asking questions about. Well, what are you going to offer me? Yeah, because this conference is looking dead. They don't currently have a TV contract. They apparently had a TV contract sort of ready and waiting, and maybe they're going to do this TV contract with Apple. And uh, not long after it was announced that there was like this tentative agreement with Apple, uh, everyone left. <laughs> everyone left. So I... Apparently they didn't like that deal with Apple is all is is the only takeaway there. Yeah. But so let, former let's... former members of the Pac-12, Jared, you've mentioned a few of them. Which ones? San Diego San Diego State. Uh they were uh, boy, well, they were partial members. They weren't football members. Yeah. Uh Boise State was. Um, I think in um Boise State was in wrestling. Uh, what else we got? Gonzaga Kyle. was Kyle. in baseball. We're all, we are only worried about football here. <laughs> that conference yeah, down, realignment. Down to four, down to, <clears throat> yeah, down to four universities about, now, Jared. Yeah. Conference realignment is about two things. Research money and football. Jared, what about basketball? No. Does it matter? That's just a cherry on top if they if they have a good basketball program. That's a thing you put in the press release, but it, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't. Kyle, why isn't everyone clamoring? And I mean clamoring for uh Kansas or Duke. What where where's all the Yeah. You see my point. Now let's uh, let's get right into this. Let me switch back to the screen that I wasn't supposed to start on, but I started on it. A, a brief history lesson, because so many people are whining and crying about this and that, and I get it. But I was having a conversation in the Discord server. Some of the younger folks in the Discord server, I go, "Hey, how many of you show of hands?" How many of you know what the Southwest Conference even is? We're old, Kyle. We're old. I I I don't think we count. Zach, you're old too. You don't you also don't count. Esquire, uh, you're not young per se. Uh, but I also think I'm older than you. So I'd be interested to know if you had ever even heard of the Southwest Conference. I know I know you've uh I am aware of it, yes. <laughs> the Southwest Conference was once the home to Texas football. Uh as as well as, yeah. as Texas AM yeah. and Baylor 
and Texas Tech and SMU back when SMU was actually SMU getting death penalty <clears throat> plays a role in the Southwest Conference falling apart. Um, TCU back before, but also like TCU uh, along with Houston, SMU, Rice, um, teams really screwed over when this when this conference fell apart. Uh, the what was then yep. known as the Big Eight came in and just disintegrated disintegrated the 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 Southwest Conference. I don't remember seeing games played in it. I've heard of uh, Bonnaby Jones talk about the Southwest Conference uh, where the Pac-12 Big 12 combine and create the Pac Southwest. I like that name. I like that name too, but like the Pac-12 is dead. The Big 12 is just eating what's what the Big 10 didn't want. Um, Southwest Conference actually sounds like peak 80s shenanigans fun. Uh, I, I don't disagree. Point is, is that how I, I another question I asked the younger fellas. The other, another question I asked the younger fellas. Did you guys know that Penn State used to play independently? Did you know Florida State used to play independently and did for a very long time? Hell, in this graph I have up on the screen right now, I'm showing you like teams like Miami currently currently being a currently in the, in the, in the form of the graph, which I think I said is, is about 1990, 1991-ish. Um, when did Florida State join a conference? I didn't know they were long. They were long independent. They joined the ACC in, I want to say, it is the early 90s, 91, 92, 93, which was that sort of 1993. Uh, is when Penn State joined the Big Ten. Yeah. So like 1990 to 1993 was one of the first big shifts of conference realignment. Uh, you saw Penn State join the Big Ten. You saw Florida State join the ACC. You saw the Southwest Conference just get picked apart by the Big Eight. The Big Eight then became the Big Twelve. Um, if you're if you're looking, Arkansas was also part of and I believe the first team to leave the Southwest Conference was Arkansas. Um, so all I'm saying is, if you're looking for a big bad guy in, in conference realignment. The SEC taking Arkansas might be the starting point. I'm just saying. The SEC stealing Arkansas might be the. Is that when more games became televised? Yes. Um, I forget when the rule changed exactly. Um, but the NCAA had a rule that like limited how often a university could be on TV or some. St I, I don't know. I'm I am now deep. I'm, I'm now going back before my time when I start talking about that, um, which is one of the reasons why Notre Dame was such a big deal, because they weren't part of a con so they could be on TV. I, I don't know. I, I don't know all the details of all of that. Um, but like, it was not an understood thing that like you could watch Ohio state on TV. Jared was born an old man. Everyone, this is, this is a factual statement. And yeah, I'm, I'm leaving this graph up on, on the screen for the YouTube folk, but, um, and if you're listening to the audio version of this, you can, you can check it out. YouTube.slipcast.com. Um, but this is what the conferences looked like before what was the big first shift in conference realignment in the early nineties. And it was just teams or conferences with eight or 10 essentially. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, ACC had eight. The, the big eight was eight sec, the PAC 10, what it used to be called. And then the big 10 were all, 10 uh, universities. And by the way, just, just so we're clear, uh, I have the Pac-10 here with Arizona and Arizona State, and they joined in just like the 80s. So they weren't even long in the conference at this point. <laughs> Southwest Conference had an elite logo. You I, you probably can't read it, but the, the names of all of the schools are written in that circle. 
Um, personally, I hate it. But what are you going to do? All right. <clears throat> Southwest Conference falls apart. Uh, basically because the Big 12 and partly a little bit of the SEC uh, ate it. Uh, then a few years later, the ACC uh, just absolutely decimated the Big East. Uh, yeah, Florida State joins at some point uh, in the early 90s, but then later on, Boston College, Syracuse, Miami, um, Pitt, Pitt, Rutgers, yep. Rutgers as well, yep. um, Virginia Tech. Uh, the ACC just absolutely devoured the the Big East. So the Big East, they they hung on for a few years past that. You know, they brought in like Cincinnati and they brought in some of the other sort of almost power five teams that ironically, most of which are now in. Well, actually, the. The Big East split, the Big East became. um a basketball only conference. Uh, and then what was left of the big East was what the AAC was formed around. So the AAC or the big East essentially became the AAC in football. Um, and you know, the ACC got stronger and the big 10 didn't actually do anything at that point. The SEC, uh, I, I believe that was about, but the SEC stole South Carolina. They, they stole Arkansas from the Southwest Conference, and then they stole South Carolina from what was called the Metro Conference, uh, which I didn't even bother putting on the graph. Um, Big Ten didn't do much in the late '90s, early 2000s push, but then their time. Then then they decided that they had to start pushing, and that's when you got you get that next, like that third round of conference realignment, which is when. Nebraska moved is when Rutgers and Maryland joined. Um, yep. That's when the Pac-12 stole Colorado. Um, mm -hmm. That it looked like the Big Twelve <laughs> was on its last legs. Um, and I and by the way, like Kyle and I have been talking about this conference realignment push, like this round of conference realignment that we're going through right now. Kyle and I have been talking about it for the past two years, and if I can take a moment to brag. Two years ago. Of course, Jared. Of course, Jared. Yes. <laughs> Kyle, we called this shot two years ago. We called the Big Ten rating the Pac-12 two years ago. 11 months, 11 months before USC and UCLA announced that they were going to join the Big Ten. Kyle and I predicted it on this show. We also projected Washington and Oregon to join the Big Ten on that show. So let's uh, let, let's move to the let's move to the to the modern graph. Kyle, we called this shit two years ago. There there were a, a, some differences. I think we had like the I think we had Arizona coming to the Big Ten and Arizona State going to the SEC like we didn't we didn't nail this a hundred percent on our way to 24 because there you know yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't I looked I, I rewatched or at least I went and I looked at the graph that we made two years ago I'm not going to claim it was a hundred percent it wasn't but I think like the names that mattered I think we got right yeah the I think what we had like the big 12 wasn't was just going to grab whatever was left. And you kind of look at, you kind of look at the graph and yeah, they, they, they made a big push here to grab, grab, what was it? Three, three, no, four, four um, universities from the, the PAC 12, which we, we didn't expect that to happen at the, we thought the big 12 would just find other other universities that's kind of similar to like Cincinnati. It's not quite a power five, but has some name recognition to them. Memphis, San Diego yeah. state. Uh, I, I think are two good <clears throat> teams that are out there. I ended up wrong in the discord chat. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So 
again, we're, we're looking at where things sit right now. And one of the things that I think is worth noting is that the Big Ten just brought in. All right, let's, let's actually back up. This latest round of realignment basically started when Oklahoma and Texas announced they were joining the SEC. Yep. Um, that happening was Kyle and I's catalyst to record that show two years ago. That announcement is when Kyle and I went and then we we did what was the power Two was what we named that episode. And we basically laid out a roadmap in which. There would only be two conferences, two power, true, two true power conferences in college football. And I don't think a lot of people took us super seriously at the time. And I think that that's now a roadmap that everyone sees is happening. And it is. And yeah, it is. And but I it's interesting what's going to happen with the Big 12 now. Like, are they going to try to be this try to be another big player here? Because the ACC is next. Like, yeah, like it's it's a, it's that meme with um, with death knocking on all those doors and yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Kill, killing all them. Yeah. ACC is next is that the next door here and it the, and it's going to come the, down to right, which what what's the big 10 and what's the sec who's who, who are they going to go after ironically the big 12 had uh the advantage of getting ripped apart first because even before texas and oklahoma left nebraska left to the big 10 and colorado left for the pac-12 uh in the, missouri Missouri left for the SEC. Uh, the 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 Big Twelve was getting ripped apart, and the good news about that the the what turns out to be an advantage about that is that that let them essentially go out and grab like TCU and and some other teams that were like that next rung up that were like some really good group of five teams and then you know they grab and then it happens again texas leaves and oklahoma leaves so they went out and they just grabbed up the best teams that they could who weren't currently in conference or in power conferences and what they ended up with is a pretty decent roster You have yeah, West Virginia, roster. TCU, Cincinnati, BYU, Central Florida, Houston. This is a good basketball conference. Well, basketball doesn't matter, Kyle. <laughs> um, That's. Yeah, I, I know. I know. And then, you know, it leaves them in a good position to then go grab up the two Arizonas, bring Colorado back into the fold and then bring Utah in. Aside from Boise. Aside from Boise, every sort of group of five disruptor team of the past few years is now in the Big 12. Yeah. And I again, this is this conference will be nothing compared to the Big 10 and the SEC. But they're at least going to survive. And I don't know that I can say the same thing about the ACC. Because everyone keeps talking about, oh, the grant of rights deal, the grant of rights deal. It goes to 2035 or 2036, whatever it is. Grant of rights deal, grant of rights deal. Y'all, the ACC can't own the rights to the ACC teams if there's no more ACC. What if the ACC simply stops, stops existing? Now, now the question is going to be here, Jared. What, what, what's our what's our prediction, or what do we think these schools from the ACC going here? Now, before you answer that, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, I'm a little stuffy right now. I got this trying to get over this cold here, so I apologize. There's definitely some new members. Big, big part of Big Ten going after a lot of these schools. New schools have uh, are now. 
members members of the AAU, which yes. has a big part of the Big Ten conference and who they're going to go after yeah. to join to join their conference here. And so this this year in 2023, the new members include University of South Florida, Notre Dame, um, University of Miami, Florida, uh, University of California, Riverside, George Washington University, and Arizona State University. Arizona was already AAU, for the record. And Florida State apparently, like, just missed, like, just missed uh, getting invited to the AAU. I know I have long said that the Big Ten would only accept AAU schools with the exception of Notre Dame. Well, I get to move that exception now, right? That's yep, how the rules work. You do now. And I'm moving that exception to Florida State. The Big Ten would take Florida State if given the oper- if if that's how things played out. There are two schools, in my opinion. Maybe three if you want to count Miami. That I think teams that are somewhat equally likely to end up in the Big Ten versus the or uh, versus the SEC. I think those schools are Miami, Florida State, and Georgia Tech. I think those teams are just as likely to end up in one conference versus the other when it's all said and done. Yeah, I, I definitely can see that too. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting. Like Florida State, the more I keep talking about, it, and, and to the extent Miami now, now that now that Miami is a part of the AAU here, I. I just have a hard time seeing. I just have a hard time seeing it's, the Big Ten going down to Florida and grabbing grabbing some universities. Now, if they really want to, um, like, really expand their um, their footprint, yeah, absolutely. Like Florida is the is the big state that you want to you want to get your foot foot in the door in there. But man, I just it, it's hard for me to see the Big Ten. Uh, sending an invitation to Miami and Florida State. Uh, I have been thinking about it, and I have actually grown pretty comfortable with the idea of Florida State. Miami, for one reason or another, I have a really hard time seeing it. Um, Mm -hmm. Florida State, the more I think about it, the more sense it makes. Um. I, I think, however, if I'm going to project this, which is, in fact, Kyle, what we're doing today, yep. I am still going to put Florida State in the SEC. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I didn't even think this was a possibility the last time we did this. And I do think it's a possibility that the Big Ten gets Florida State. Now, I do at least think it's a possibility, but I'm still going to put them in the SEC. Um, Clemson, I, I think that they go together. I think yep. the next like earth shattering announcement, I believe the next earth shattering announcement in conference realignment. And I don't exactly know when this happens. I don't have a I don't have a, a a firm grasp on the timing of it. But I think the next like earth shattering announcement is Florida State and Clemson and possibly also Miami. Maybe all at the same time announcing that they're going to the SEC. Uh that that is how I see this shaking out uh, the Big Ten sort of, you know, the SEC brings in Oklahoma and Texas. Big Ten says, all right, watch this. They bring in USC and UCLA, which uh, if we're counting that as like rounds. SEC wins, right? 
like if if you just say like USC and Texas even each other out, if it's Oklahoma versus UCLA, Oklahoma is the bigger prize from a purely football standpoint. You want to start yeah, bringing yeah. academics and research and shit like that into it, then UCLA is actually better. But from a pure football standpoint, SEC wins that round. But the Big Ten then brings in two heavy, heavy football hitters in Oklahoma and Washington. So does the SEC feel like they need to answer they need to that? respond? Yeah. <clears throat> and I don't know. Like, I, I feel, I know, I know there's a lot of buzz with Florida State right now that they, that they're doing a lot with, um, they're trying to look into their finance and see <laughs> what they can do. Uh, Kyle, let's, <laughs> let's just, let's just call it what it is. They want a bigger cut. Yep. They're saying, hey, we and Clemson, we carry this conference and we're tired of splitting the money evenly and we want a bigger cut. On the surface, that that makes sense. Um, however, I will point out that that's exactly what Texas said a few years before they split from the from the Big 12. And by the way, that whole we don't want to share revenue evenly anymore is why Nebraska and call that was the catalyst for Nebraska and Colorado leaving and Missouri leaving. So it would so, not surprise me just just seeing other universities now, and I'm sure there is right now behind the scenes here behind closed doors. There are so many the, the other universities at, at AC, in the ACC that saying, all right, we need to reevaluate where we're at. And where, where do we need to go or is we're going to get caught left behind and look at these other teams like Stanford and Cal and Oklahoma State and Kansas. And they're kind of just stuck where they're at. Do we should we make a move so that we're not one of those teams that get caught behind? You don't want to be Oregon State right now. Yeah. I think I think Stanford and Cal and they might have to. So like Oregon and Washington uh, did not get an even cut of the Big Ten pie. Um, instead of the 40 million or 40 plus million that each team is getting from the TV deals, they're getting like 30 and they're not going to get an even split until um the next TV contract, which is in like 2030. Um, so does that, is that something that they would also maybe bring in Stanford and Cal on? And for the record, I, I, I do yeah, I think, think so. so. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. I think, I think the big 10 would go back out to California and pick up the, the last two, uh, universities and and from a big 10 standpoint like an academic yeah those those are those are as good as you're going to get out west those, those are those are the final two Cal is the best most highly rated public university in the country period stanford is the best university in the western half of the united states period uh, those are two of the best schools in the country, period. Uh, you know, and you already have a bit of that Cal system in, because if you don't know this, UCLA is also Cal. It's just Cal Berkeley and Cal Los Angeles. Um, and if you also don't know this, Stanford and Cal are both um, essentially San Francisco. It's Silicon Valley. There's lots and lots of money there. There's lots and so lots of research opportunities there. Uh, it would be a huge get academically, research wise. And yes, those things do matter. I we're doing this episode again, Kyle. I'm going to have to say it again. Football money, sports money is, I believe it is a tenth. 10%, it is a tenth of the revenue that research grants bring in. 
Sports big deal. don't matter. All right. Sports don't matter. Research money matters. So when you're like, man, why did they bring in Rutgers and Maryland? Which, by the way, people were all pissy about that. Oh, you're going to go get cable buys and you're going to go get this and you're going to go bring in research money. Well, guess which conference is still uh, alive and strong and making tons of cash. Y'all, all all of you owe Delaney an apology. Because what he's doing, what he set up works. And I can go go to New York and actually watch Big Ten games now. (laughs) (laughs) You say that like New York's right there. But Kyle, along those lines... Uh, and, and, and actually, before I go too much further here, I still want to go ahead and slide uh, Georgia Tech. Yep. So that, that would be that would bring both conferences Over to, the SEC. to 20. That would bring both of them to 20 there. Yeah. So on top of what currently has already happened, we add Stanford and Cal to the Big Ten, bringing them to 20. We add Florida State, Clemson, Miami and Georgia Tech uh, to the SEC, bringing them to 20 is is what uh, we have done so far. Uh, and by the way, not only is this about research money and about uh, TV access, it's about those things. But by the way, it's also, if you're Delaney, like he was doing back then, again, you all owe him an apology. He saw the population shift of this country leaving the Midwest. The population was shifting to the South. So we're not just talking about research money and we're not just talking about football money. We're also talking about recruiting territory. The Big Ten, again, if you add Stanford and Cal, You've essentially just locked up the entire state of California as Big Ten country. But then you look at the other big states in terms of recruiting, the SEC pretty much locked down here. No, they've already locked, well, somewhat m- most of Texas. Yeah. And then here would be Florida. You, you would lock you would lock down Florida then with Miami and Florida State. Absolutely. Um, and by the way, Georgia. Yeah, because not only do you have Georgia and Georgia Tech, but you also have Clemson. And I know you Which know this, Kyle. Pretty much Georgia. It's it's, it's right Georgia. on the border of South Carolina and Georgia. So. That is what that is. Um, yeah. So then so, there, there's there's quite a, there's quite a few teams left here, Jared. There's what? There's 10 teams still in the ACC and there's a handful still that's kind of floating there with with no home yet. I, I look I look at this list here, Jared, and yeah. there's a there's a couple of couple of uh, logos that stick out to me. OK, I am listening. I, th- I think I, th- I think probably the big the big shining well, the two shining ones that stand out to me, Jared. Yeah. Is one of the schools that it's now a um, AAU membership and that's Notre Dame. Notre Dame. As well, as well, as well as a, uh, a, uh, a light blue color in, uh, in the state of North Carolina. Yeah. Those two really stick out to me. Notre Dame. Let's talk about Notre Dame for a second. We're talking about Stanford. We're talking about Cal. Part of me thinks, and I don't think Stanford and Cal are coming immediately for the record. Um, They both might go independent for a minute. We'll see how that goes. Because I don't, I don't see him playing in a four team pack 12. I don't see him playing in the pack four. Um, I, I think if the big 10, the Notre Dame came out recently and said, we're still not interested in joining the Big Ten. I, I don't think they I think it's like sources, right? I don't think they just like put out a press release, but it was just like, we're still not interested. 
I'm going to point something out. Uh, if Stanford joins the Big Ten, with the exception of Navy, who's not even on my chart, with the exception of Navy, every single Notre Dame rival is now in the Big Ten. Michigan, yeah. Michigan State, Purdue, USC, Stanford. All of their rivals are now in the Big Ten. And as Kyle and I have talked about before, we're heading to a two conference system. If the Big Ten and the SEC decide to flip the bird and say, hey, we're going to go just go do our own thing. Screw all the rest of you. And heck, Jared, for, for all we know, too, depending on how Notre Dame's TV deal may go down. Right. They, they may they may join sooner than later, too, depending on how that goes. Yeah, it's. It's a bit of a mess from my understanding in Notre Dame. They're like the administrators, the coaches, like basic, basically everyone at the university with any sort of say in the matter want to join a conference. Uh, apparently it's just some super old, super rich donors who are just not wanting that to happen. Uh, and the dudes who just fund your university by giving you money get to call shots. Um, how much? How much? Uh, how much will that really be after they die? When the Big Ten, when the, yeah, when the Big Ten <laughs> comes in and, and get and just drops off bags of cash at your foot at your doorstep. Yeah. I think if the Big Ten were to add Stanford, Cal, and Notre Dame all in one announcement, I think that's like one of the biggest academic booms in history. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, that's an enormous academic tidal wave. Because, again, we're not just talking about football money. We're not just talking about Big Ten Network and Fox money here. We're talking about research money. It's one of the just the biggest waves in, like, just pure academic waters. Those three universities joining the Big Ten research share is enormous. It's an enormous financial get. Um. Uh, Kyle's also talking about that light blue North Carolina. I do think that they end up joining and I think they end up joining alongside uh, with Virginia. And I know Virginia yep. academically excites nobody. Um, but if there is a Cal of the East Coast, it's Virginia. Um, that's just one of the best universities in the country, period. Uh, it's about recruiting territory. So you get, you know, I got Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina. You're basically owning the entire eastern coast of the United or the northeastern coast of the United States. You're cutting you're cutting in like the, you, if you look at the the map of the U.S., like you can pretty much other, other than like California, you can pretty much like cut a line straight across the U S until you get to Ohio. And then it's like, Nope, we're going to go down to Virginia yeah. and then North Carolina. We're going to, we're going to dip down into the, into the South there a little about bit. About that. I'm adding Memphis. No, I'm kidding. Um, the, <laughs> what, wouldn't, wouldn't that be something that they just added Memphis? Um, <laughs> so you now have the big 10, adding again if we're talking like the sec needing to respond and i think they i think they come back with a big response and hell actually if we're talking actual timelines i think this could happen before the acc raid depending upon because we're talking we were talking earlier like the sec needs to respond to oregon and washington right 
But if all the lawyers doing their lawyering things on the East Coast don't figure out how to get out of that grants of grant of rights deal for TV and all that. Yeah. What if that takes longer than we're expecting? And what if the SEC sees an opportunity to uh, really solidify Texas? And they make the jump over and grab TCU. And hell, while they're at it, they grab Oklahoma State as well. You add TCU, you add Oklahoma State. I think that's your direct response, potentially, yeah. depending upon how the, the ACC timeline works out. I do not believe at all that the ACC is safe until 2036. I, <laughs> I don't believe that at all. And I'm not saying that that means that they're vulnerable right now. I think there will be some legal battles take place. I think there'll be some maneuvering within the ACC to potentially just dissolve the ACC, but also what's the legalities of dissolving the ACC. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of legal shit to work out there. I have no idea how long that will work out or how long that will take to work out, but it won't be till 2036. I promise you that. So maybe the direct response to Oregon, Washington is actually TCU, Oklahoma state. So Jared, is 22 the magic number or no. is it 24 or is it 24 that we've been talking about 24 i am sticking with 24 i, I believe it is a 24 team big 10 so, and sec so what two teams would the big 10 then from what's left here would go after in my in my in my mind here that i see uh, it's it's one your your math's not mathing correctly there's only five teams on the bottom taking us. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. One team, one additional team. And honestly, my prediction, because when we did the, the power two, part two, about a year ago, when we revisited our power two uh, predictions, at that time, Kyle, we put in Duke. Great university, great research. Mm -hmm. There's a basketball team, but as I have stated, basketball does not matter. Uh, you could say North Carolina says you have to bring them with us. Uh, and I don't think North Carolina is going to like have enough energy, enough, enough sway to be calling their shot like that. Um, If you if you really wanted to sit down and fight me about it, you might be able to convince me that it's Pitt. You might be able to convince me if we look at like who's currently in the Big Twelve, and maybe some of those teams are vulnerable and could be poached. But like Iowa State doesn't excite me. Kansas, Kansas State, Baylor, West Virginia, none of those teams excite me. Cincinnati doesn't excite me. None of those teams in the about the only teams in the Big 12 that you I would look at as like potential Big 10 teams are three teams that already now just joined, which is Arizona, Colorado and Utah. That's it. Those are the only teams that, that do any, that move well, the meter for me. So the teams that's left here, Jared, that is currently an AAU member. Yeah. Uh, that would be Duke, Pitt, mm -hmm. Syracuse, mm -hmm. and newly added South Florida. Is South Florida a real... <laughs> Yeah, they are. Yeah, no, no, no. I they they just joined the AA, the AAU. I know this. I just have a really hard time seeing 
the South yeah, Florida Bulls joined the Big Ten. Um, I have no idea. I mean, they're in the AAU, so the research and the money have to be there, right? Like the AAU doesn't let them in otherwise. I don't know oh, yeah. a ton about the university. I don't know a ton about like who they have business relationships with and how big their alumni base is. Um, I know they're, despite the name in, in central Florida, um, which ha we have to, we have to, we have to take a point off for that regardless. Um, you, you could really twist my arm and convince me, Kyle, that the next team is Pitt. But when we did this a year ago, my prediction was Duke and I'm going to, I think I'm going to stick with Duke. Yeah. I, I, I keep going back and forth with Pitt and Duke, but maybe, maybe to get UNC, they may say, Hey, Duke's got to come along too. It could be like one of those things. Maybe uh, I don't think UNC is going to have that sort of pull. Like, if if you're if you're UNC, your your options legitimately might be, well, do we go to the Big Ten or do we go to the Big Twelve, and like the money, the, the it's a world of difference between the two. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't I don't think they're going to have the negotiating power to be like, well, you have to take Duke if you take us. Like I don't think they have that sort of pull. Um, I'm I'm gonna say Duke. Um, right. it's. Of all of my calls, it's my it's it's the one I feel the least confident about. I'll say that. Now, Jared, I know I know this is purely for football, but you look at those last four yeah. universities there. That's 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 a pretty this last that's a really good addition for, for basketball. <laughs> yeah, it is. But it does but it, one, you're right. Two, it still doesn't matter. <laughs> Now, Kyle, I know I know you live. We just talked about one more. We just talked about North Carolina. We just talked about Duke. You might be wondering, hey, does NC State get left out in the cold? Maybe, maybe. And by the cold, I think we're still talking like the Big Twelve. But the Big I'm Twelve or SEC? The SEC. Uh. Would they get slaughtered? Yes. Is it basically like bringing South Carolina in? Kinda. But I think the important thing for you to remember in this is that I need to get them to 24 teams. So shut up. I'm also putting Virginia Tech in. <laughs> territory grabs, recruiting territory grabs, direct response to Virginia and the two North Carolina schools is to also go what? into North Carolina and Virginia. But let me let me throw let me throw another uh, university in there that I think I think could be a sleeper in here that could maybe join the SEC. Okay. That would be the Cardinals. Louisville? Mm-hmm. What does Louisville... I mean, it's not a rich recruiting territory. Why do I care about Louisville? Uh, tell me why I should care about Louisville. Is it a I rich just, university? Is it in? Is it a great TV market? Are are they exceptionally good at football? They had that what in two years, but they had a quarterback. <laughs> they weren't good at football. They had an amazing quarterback. Yeah, I don't. I just when I look at Louisville and I look at their academic and all that, I. I think it fits in line with the SEC. So, <laughs> did you just call them dumb? No. Did you just say it's a bad no. school? <laughs> no, Jared. We we the SEC doesn't give a shit about the quality of the schools. I think is the point here. But I guess I guess what I'm saying is don't don't I wouldn't sleep on Louisville. It, it would not surprise me if SEC said. When the SEC does their next picks, and when it's all said and done, you would see the Cardinals in that conference. Would not surprise me. 
I, I, th- I think that would be my, I think that would be kind of my sleeper. I think NC State University. and Virginia. I think NC State and Virginia Tech have more value. Oh yeah, I, I would think so too. Yes, but but I think what you have here, Jared, I, I would agree with. I, I would okay. agree with NC State and Virginia Tech. Yes, because the, then you got the SEC. Like, oh no, you you hey Big Ten, you took UNC Virginia. Well, we'll we'll take NC State and Virginia Tech. Yeah. So. Now the Big 12, once again, has lost um, arguably their two best members. Um, and the ACC has now fallen apart. Uh, so, Kyle, Louisville is still going to get a home here, as yeah. is Pitt. And I think I think in here, yeah, the Big 12. In, in that, the that new Big make, 12. That would make sense. And then it's close proximity to... Cincinnati and West Virginia. So they would by, have by some, the, uh, they would have some neighbors. Oh, and by the way, like these are some good old rivalries here. You West Virginia uh-huh. and Pitt yeah. backyard brawl, um, Cincinnati add Cincinnati into that. Um, this is a fun conference. I'm not saying it's anywhere near as good as the other two, but this is a fun conference. I would watch this football. Um, so yeah, we add Pitt and Louisville to the big 12. Then, um, I don't think we're done at that point. I think we can still add San Diego state add another team out West, uh, Memphis, which is a team I'm surprised didn't get brought in when all of the other AAC teams were brought in. Like when Cincinnati, and UCF and Houston were brought in. I'm su- I'm surprised Memphis didn't come in at that point. So let me go ahead and correct that wrong. Um, well, if I, we're talking about uh, rivals here, Jared, if you add in Louisville there, you can bring in a you can bring in an old I did add rival. In oh, okay. Well, yeah, I said I understand Louisville. now. I see what you mean now. Sorry. You head on over to North Carolina and you pick up that. Uh, Pick up those uh, demon deacons over there. Wake. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah, that's already on the roadmap, Kyle. Already on the roadmap. <laughs> um, as well as those South Florida Bulls. Yep. You got UCF there. Add it. Add in that team over in Tampa. Yeah, uh, it's again. The Big 12 at this point, as we project this, is Texas Tech, Iowa State, Kansas State, Kansas, Baylor, West Virginia, Cincinnati, BYU, UCF, Houston, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, Utah, Pitt, Louisville, San Diego State, Memphis, Wake Forest, and the South Florida Bulls. I would watch this football. This is good football. I would watch this. Is it, this would be the new this would be the new Pac-12 after dark, Jared. <laughs> so what we now have is a power two and then a group of uh misfits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, I, I projected out all of the conferences through this. I we I wasn't going to do all of it on the show, obviously. This is something that if you're um, in the Discord server, I will share the entire document. Um, I projected out how all of this would affect the Mountain West and what the Mountain West would look like after this. I projected out that the AAC would somehow survive yet another raid and still exist. By the way, the AAC uh, gets to add Boston College, Syracuse and UTEP. To go along with Alabama, Birmingham, Florida Atlantic, NC, Charlotte, North Texas, Rice, SMU, uh, Texas, San Antonio, uh, the East Carolina Pirates, Tulane, Temple and Navy. The ACC is also still fun. Uh, I sent Washington State and Oregon State to the Mountain West to play with Air Force, Boise, Colorado State, Nevada, UNLV, New Mexico, San Jose, Oof. Utah State, and Wyoming. That that one's Oof. not as fun. I, I I don't. Yeah. No. I, the AAC is still fun. Uh, the Conference USA 
is we can call it dead. Um, it I, I projected it out. Uh, for Florida International, Jacksonville State, Liberty, Louisiana Tech, Middle Tennessee, Sam Houston, New Mexico State, Western Kentucky, and Army is what is currently in the Conference USA. Um, according to my projection, uh, that that's not great. Sun Belt still fun. Mac still fun. I don't think I changed any of those two. Actually, I don't think I changed any either of those two. I think those two are just still doing their thing. Hell, maybe the Sun Belt or the Mac raid uh, Conference USA for its for its scraps. Middle Tennessee and the Mac would be fun. Western Kentucky and the Mac would be fun. Don't tell me it wouldn't be. It would be. That's what I'm saying. Florida International and the Sun Belt. That'd be fun. Sam Houston in the Sun Belt, that'd be fun. Th these are all things that, that could possibly happen down in the group of five. I said I wasn't going to do it, and then I did it. But I, uh, but I didn't do the graphic is the important part, because that, that takes time, uh, both on air and pre-air. So I did tell you, I did tell you, I did end up telling you how those conferences uh, play out. Kyle, you have it up on this. We have it up on the screen here. Where where am I wrong? Everything. <laughs> really? Because I listen, I'm nah, gonna brag again. Nah. I have a real great track record at this shit. No, I, I, I have a like a very strong gut feeling about Stanford and Cal will come to the Big Ten. Yeah. And then I, I just think Notre Dame just makes too much sense that they finally they finally cave in and like, all right, we're not not this half, half, half of their body into the ACC. Like, all right, we'll play some teams here, but no, they'll they'll cave in and join the Big Ten. I've heard and it. Then, I've heard it rumored, by the way, and this is literally just a, a rumor. I've heard it rumored that the SEC doesn't want to raid the ACC in part because they don't sure. want to destroy the ACC because they don't want to deliver Notre Dame to the Big Ten because they know goddamn well that Notre Dame would never join the SEC. It's going to happen in one year or another. I think so. I, I think I think I, I think the writing is pretty much written on the wall there for Notre Dame to join the big 10, especially now. Now there's like no excuse for the big 10 to not have further conversations with, with Notre Dame. Now it's like, Oh, Hey, I see that. I see that, uh, that not a d d diploma anymore, but, uh, it, the AAU membership plaque on your wall there. I, it makes too so, but, much. But, but, but then the other, but then the other ones kind of get a little tricky with UNC, Virginia, and Duke. Yeah, UNC to me makes makes a lot of sense, and then yeah, Virginia as well too. And then the Duke one can be, eh, could be Duke, could be Pitt, but but I think about I think twenty four as um, Jared and I've mentioned today and two years ago. I think twenty four is that magic number. When it's said and done. I really do think so. I, I do think 24 is the magic number. And I think once you once we hit this critical mass. I, I think that that leads to at least the Big Ten and the SEC, at least the Big Ten and the SEC breaking away from the NCAA and joining forces and forming a, whether they call it a semi-pro league or not forming what is essentially a semi-pro league together. And each conference would then have a four team playoff. What it, it's basically a determined turn into MLB. Kyle, would this be fun? Tell me, I, I, we're going way over on time, but would this be fun? The Big Ten only plays the Big Ten. The SEC only plays the SEC. Then they do a playoff. 
own separate playoffs. And then the only time the Big Ten and the SEC play is for the championship of college football. Yeah, that, that, sounds, that sounds fine on paper, but won't happen, though. Because then, because I still think you'll still have some of these teams that lost their rivalry, like like uh, Washington. I think yeah, they will probably st- could still probably play Washington State out of conference still. Uh, UNC could play Duke if if Duke doesn't end up in the Big Ten. I think you'll still see s- some of those rivalries will still will still uh, play out in in non conference play in football. Yeah. Okay. I there's too much there's too much on the line f- financially and freedom wise. I, I think the Big Ten and the SEC split from the NCAA at least in regards to football. Football. I'm I'm talking specifically football. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the ultimate conference realignment which is leaving the NCAA. The, the ultimate realigning. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, a name has been really uh, popping up here. And I know we I know we haven't talked zero. We talked nothing about camp. But we'll, we'll get to that in next week's episode, though. But a name that you're going to hear, you're going to hear a lot, if not already, is the is the transfer Davidson Egbin Nosen making a huge splash already? Uh, yeah. Just three days in already in camp, and is it, he's going to be a household name in in Buckeye country before too long. How and I have learned how to pronounce his name already. If that tells you anything, <laughs> uh, yeah. Check out. Uh, it, I I projected Egbin Nosen to be the starting uh, corner. Uh, opposite um oh hi austin we're actually just ending uh yeah i i i think he's gonna i'm gonna go ahead and switch over to this screen hi everybody uh i i think he's i think he's the starting cb2 on the team for sure definitely but no that's that's it we'll, we'll save the rest of our camp talk for next week's episode and soon jared soon it will be it'll be game week and then we will get back to our fall uh, our fall uh timeline here where we'll post out four episodes a week i'm tired thinking about it already if i'm being honest <laughs> but i'm looking forward to it Nonetheless. Evan Pryor should be RB1. Don't you forget it. <laughs> Says Austin, whose current Discord name is Evan Pryor Stan. Just so you know where he stands. Um, I don't I don't I don't I don't like myself for that joke. Um, all right, Kyle, that is it for today's episode. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by Signals Midwest. I believe they are from Cleveland, if I'm not mistaken. Um but the name of the band is Signals Midwest. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, sports local podcasters. Once again, this is Signals Midwest.